Good morning. Set up my local stream, set up my Facebook stream. On my local stream, you see just a little corner of my cell phone right here, but I feel like you guys can live with that. How are you? I am very tired. Oh, fuck my life. And I just spilled water. I hey, a towel. Yay. Look at how well that worked out. I mean, nobody likes spilling water everywhere, which I just did. That's how you know I'm tired. My whole desk. My whole desk currently is spilt water. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice way to start your day? I feel like, regardless of the spilt water, that I'm still in a decent mood. Like, you know. I mean, there is a lid to my Avon Dual Elixir floating on my desk. <laughs> it's fucking floating. It's hydroplaning across my desk, guys. <laughs> What a way to start the morning. Isn't that great? I'm so excited that this happened to me. Thank you. Thank you. You know, sometimes our, our Mondays start out really challenging. And uh, mine, I just, hey, you know, who needs last year's um, finished tax documents? You know, just spill fucking water on them. And forget how much the government robbed you to give to Ukraine. That's like my favorite part. So, just so you guys know, when you're like, homelessness is really a problem and all this shit, your government takes your money and gives it to other countries. And then you wonder why we have such terrible roads, <laughs> falling apart cities, drugs everywhere. You're like, keep the border open. Keep pumping drugs into all the homeless. Yeah, but it's a problem. Well, you got to fucking pick one. <laughs> Do you want the border open to pump all the drugs into all the homeless? Or do you want to shut it, keep all our money and take care of ourselves? I say, right, I'm more libertarian. I believe that we'd be very charitable if we produce things instead of using human slaves in other countries and stuff. So if America was doing well and we actually spent our money on ourselves and improved everything here, we'd be like, hey, we have extra money. Let's send that to help people. And if someone said, let's do it to help Ukraine to start World War III, I'd be like, no. Nah. <laughs> like, yes, what's happening over there is terrible. It's not our business, guys. Like, if we want to help negotiate for it to stop, sure. Giving them money? No, thank you. Hard pass. Like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> That'd be like Russia funding Puerto Rico fighting us in a war. Or Russia funding Cuba right on our doorstep. Or Mexico. Or Canada. Ukrainians speak Russian. <laughs> they used to be Russia not very long ago. Like, I, we just have no business being over there. None. I, I, I mean, and I say this as your Avon lady that cannot get anyone to buy Avon. Why? Because everyone's terrified because we're at war right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this right now on my stream so that I may get closer to the camera. What is it? It is a huge thing of Avon products. Everything I have. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Look at that. Everything I have is Avon. That's so great because I changed my setup and I'm sitting here and I'm like, dude, I have room for my life. There we go. Hi locals. Hi Facebook. Yeah, it was terrible over there in 2014. Like we have no business being over there. Zero, none. I don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. I don't understand why we're there. Okay. 
We need our money here. <laughs> here. This is where our money needs to be. When you see a bridge that looks like it's going to fall apart, that, no, well, guys, if you think I'm commenting on plastic surgery in terms of a cleft palate, a woman whose tits are so big, her spine is about to break, and she has those huge grooves like this deep from having to wear a bra, like... That is not the plastic surgery I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I chose to have kids. They destroyed my body. But I need to be sexy and give boners. And these pesky kids that I chose to have, they're pests. Pests. And they ruined my body, those achy poo-poo kids. So I'm going to risk my life for vanity so I can be sexy and give boners. Dude, normalizing this shit is fucked up. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Don't have children. Don't have children. If you're selfish, don't have kids. Like, what the fuck? This lady from MTV, someone just posted a picture. I'm going to get a mommy makeover. I'm going to be sexy. I'm going to be sexy again and hot. She died. She's dead, dudes. This bitch ain't going to raise her kids. She's not going to hang out with her friends. She is fucking dead. And she was a baby. She was like 30 years old, man. Oh, but it won't happen to me. I'm going to be sexy. I'm going to get boners. Like, every dick's going to get hard. Like, that's why you're doing it, dudes. Don't say you're doing it for you. Why would you get big old tits? If it's just, it's for me. I want boners. Yeah, look at me and sexually want me. Don't have children. Don't fucking spread your legs. Don't have kids. Or have them when your body can heal from them. 18 to 27. Go for it. Those are the years. What happened? She chose to get plastic surgery and she tossed the dice and she lost. She was posting pictures with her surgeon before she went, oh my God, time to get sexy. Time to get those boners going. I'm, gonna, I'm doing this for me. Dude, her kids have no mother. No mother. This is, I mean... This, you sign a book, right? You, like Ursula, signing your voiceover to the sea witch. You sign a thing. Guys, I am, sometimes it's crucial to your well-being to be sexy for the boners. Stop it. Fuck off with this, guys. I already said if you have a cleft palate, that's fine. If you're like, it's totally fine to risk your life for vanity. It's totally fine. Murder people. You are the problem. This is why our society is fucked up. This is why we're telling little kids that they're not who they are and that they should take puberty blocker, blockers and they should fucking chop up their arms and make dicks out of them. This is an issue. This is a fucking issue, dude. I had body dysmorphia. I have franken tits. I am so chopped up. It's so gross. Like, I'm sorry. I cried for a year. And it's those women, they're like, oh my God, sexy, yeah, cheer her Adrienne on, chop them up, chop up your boobs. And then when it's fucked up, hey, bye. <laughs> there they go. So empowering. Really? Was it so empowering? When I went in for my explant, I was shaking so fucking hard because I knew. Then I knew. I'm risking my life, but I can't leave these in. I might die because I'm a fucking idiot. I'm so fucking stupid and dumb. I let cheerleaders of narcissistic vanity worshiping women cheer me into the plastic. Get it done. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're horrible people. Yeah, it's empowering. Yeah, cut yourself up. Chop yourself up. You're not good enough the way you are. You have to cut yourself up to be good enough. They were all there cheering me on, and none of them were there when it got all fucked up. Not a single one of those bitches was there. None. <laughs> they weren't there. They weren't there when everything went wrong. I went to the best fucking surgeons there were. Do you want to know how much I spent on two boob jobs that both went bad? Forty thousand dollars. Let me say that again. I spent forty thousand 
dollars to go to the best fucking surgeon Beverly Hills had to offer. And all the women, oh my God, empowerment. <laughs> I'm a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, yeah, I'll go in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking narcissist, vanity worshiping piece of shit. They all did that. Oh my God, it's for you. It's totally for you. And then everything went wrong and they're like, there they went. Hey, hey, empowerment bitches, where are you? Well, mine are fine. Sorry that happened to you. <laughs> Too bad, so sad. I'm sexy. I'm giving boners. That's exactly what fucking happened, dude. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Well, too bad, so sad for you. Mine are sexy. Mine get boners. Uh, uh, your story, it's like, you know, uh, it's just a shit chance. I'm going to go cheer up more of my friends to do this, and then maybe they'll end up like you, but maybe not. But I'm such a piece of shit. Knowing what you went through, I'm still going to do it. Empowerment. And then there they went. <laughs> like, that's what they did. That's what they did. So... A society that normalizes surgery for vanity and then totally brushes off when someone dies from it. Someone that didn't need to die. Someone whose body didn't need to be butchered, right? So a lot of you guys know my story. $40,000, top of the line tits, right? <laughs> top of the line. That's what I'm saying, Jennifer, because the first time I plunked 20,000 came out and my body was like, what the fuck is this? Get this out. I never healed. I was in pain every single fucking day for vanity. Every single fucking day. So I went back to that doctor. I'm like, dude, everything's wrong. Knowing what I know now. I didn't know that you could do an explant. I thought everything was all fucked up and uh, it was over and done. And he's like, I can fix this. I can fix. Okay. What a doctor doesn't tell you is your tits will end up being capsular contracture. All of them. It's very rare for a woman to not end up there because your body's naturally putting scar tissue around a foreign body. Right? It's why I kept my uterus, even though it probably would have been better to get rid of it. It's because I knew that if I had problems and needed to get the mesh lining to hold my bladder after removing my uterus, that my body would reject it, right? So a doctor that chooses to mutilate any human being based on their feelings, I don't feel good enough. I don't feel good in my own skin. Dude, you need mental help. You don't need a scalpel. You need a fucking doctor. If you think that you should have big tits and you don't have them, you need a fucking shrink. And not those money racketing shrinks that can't wait to send you to your big pharma prescriptions and <laughs> fucking plastic surgery. Guys, it's not worth risking your life. And I got to tell you, man, if you went and got a boob job and you think you're going to keep those things in longer than you should, every seven years you need to be revised. You have a ticking time bomb in your chest over your lungs and your fucking heart. And you're playing Russian roulette with your organs. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. That was Rice Water Bright. Today I'm doing the Physio Gel Daily Moisture Therapy Cream. I need this. It's 20 bucks. It comes in a huge pack full of these little face masks. And my face just needs some shit. I'm so glad you didn't get implants, dude. So with my story, I go and get my explant. I'm shaking like a leaf because I'm like, I might die. I might die. That was the surgery. I sat down and I actually read that phone book they gave to you and I educated myself. And I was like, because of my stupid narcissism, my stupid fucking vanity, I have to go in here for no reason with a perfectly healthy body otherwise and risk my life. I'm a dude. I like boobs. Although smaller are good too, but I lean towards bigger ones. Hey, whatever. 
No, no man I've ever met likes fake boobs. I have asked and asked and asked. None. They're like, they feel fucking weird. Even when the chick's like, they feel totally real. They're not hard at all. You still feel a sack, a foreign object. They get cold when the weather changes. I had gloriously beautiful boobs, which tells me everyone that was telling me how empowering it was. One, they weren't my friend. Two, my doctor should have sent me to a shrink, but he wanted to make money, man. I'm sorry. It is what it is. He just wanted to make money. Surgeons doing this just want to make money. Every seven years, you have to change your tits out. Otherwise, mold might grow on them. They might break and seep. I went to about 75 doctors, all telling me my implants were intact and fine. Even the lady that removed them, who's one of the best of the best, Dr. Florence Moussad in Chicago, Illinois. I'm going to put this on for 10 minutes. Physio Gel Moisture Therapy. She's amazing, but she was like, no, no, they're, they're not exploded. I knew something was wrong. I knew it, and the experts were wrong, because when they went in there, guess what, guys? My implant had micro tears on it and had fucking leaked into my body causing my natural breasts to go into what they call necrosis, zombie titties. That means the, the flesh, the natural fatty tissue, it was dead, guys. It was dead. So, my doctor doesn't know this. Oh, my God, it already feels so good. Oh, until she's in there. So, I'm knocked out for my surgery and I don't know that this is happening when I wake up she comes in and she's like I have to talk to you like she kept checking on me to make sure I was like not out of my mind <laughs> you know you're waking up from surgery you're kind of fucked up and she's like okay don't want you to panic sorry I'm rubbing I'm rubbing this stuff in everywhere again physio gel Provides daily moisture, creamy formula, absorbs into skin. This is all about the hydration. This is all about uh, moisture barrier. And if you have very sensitive skin, and this is it. Guys, I'm trying not to sneeze. Oh, uh, okay. Trying not to sneeze. Okay. So I wake up. She's like, I need to talk to you. And she's like explaining necrosis what happened to my chest how my skin started to die um good morning shay hello everyone at locals uh she's like i had to remove the majority of your right breast like your natural breast so i went in thinking yeah i'm gonna have a little bit of butchered boobs but i had I had boobs before this, so I'm going to be fine. No. <laughs> That's not what happened, guys. She had to remove almost all my right breast. She's like, because I had to remove so much, I couldn't leave you with a C cup and a no cup. Like, this isn't even a triple A cup. I don't even know what this is. This is like a fucking 11-year-old girl, 10-year-old with, like, just starting to grow boobs. Very boyish. I'm just going to throw that out there. Like, I understand women who had to remove their breasts and they look in the mirror and they're like, I feel like a man. Like, there, there's times. <laughs> I'm like, hey, dude. <laughs> Good morning, looking in the mirror. So she removed a buttload of my left breast. And I was like, you gave me a breast reduction? And she's like, Yes. She's like, I know how you never wanted to have an elective surgery again, unless it was like a necessity in life, like a new knee or a new hip. And she's like, so I did this. She's like, my hopes is that you will come back for a fat transfer because I don't think you're going to be happy, like in your own skin and stuff. And I was like, oh my God. 
So I was presented with that choice. So over the first year after my explant, I mean, I cried every day. I felt so ugly because I already have body dysmorphia. And then I looked like a butchered fucking mess. <laughs> like, I have my husband cutting sutures out and pulling them out of my nipples and shit. Like, I just felt like chopped up salami. <laughs> I didn't feel good, man. I didn't. This this feels good. This physio gel mask. I needed this. I've been using too much retinol. It's too hot outside. I had too much sun. I needed some love. So as it healed, in the back of my mind was her like, we could do a fat transfer. We could do a fat transfer. Thank God for my husband, guys. Thank God. And thank God I have a nice ass. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> He's like, girlfriend, you did the work on that. And I'm like, You're right. <laughs> anyway. So as it started to heal and look more human, like I look like a prepubescent girl on my chest. And there is no denying the difference is like a C cup and an A cup. That, that, that would be what the visual difference is. I would say this is almost a B cup. And this isn't, isn't even a triple A cup. <laughs> so, it's like that Debbie Downer music. Wah, wah, when <laughs> you take off your bra. But I had to, like, make a decision, right? Is it worth my life to have pretty titties? Is it worth my life? One, I can work out a lot and build up my pack on this side so the cleavage at least makes it look like it's evened out, right? So I do that. Two, yeah, there's a difference, but who's really noticing outside of my husband? Three, I can use this to educate women to not do what I did. A part of me wanted to never say this, man ever right but i've always believed if you have skeletons in your closet hey closet let me fix that my cat likes to go in there you bring them out and you lay them in the sun to bleach in the lay them in the yard to bleach in the sun and no one can use them against you so i laid this all out in the sun and i'm like if i can save a couple chicks from doing this to themselves by exposing my biggest vulnerability then I'm going to do it. This happened to me because of vanity. This happened to me because of the disgusting and evil mentality that women have that we need to fix her tummies after a baby. No, you don't have babies. Don't, don't do it. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why would you have kids if you don't want what's coming with them? You can tell me I don't understand. You know what I understand? Having a butchered chest for vanity. Having a fucking deflated, horrible looking tit. My husband's like, it's not bad. And he always tries to grab it to make me feel better. I'm like, you're making this worse. You keep drawing attention to it, saying it's my favorite poop. I'm like, I appreciate what you're doing, but I'm not a fucking toddler. I know it's not your favorite boob. What's sad is you're right, Cheyenne. Many people will hear this story and still go under the knife. And I hope what happened to that poor lady that was on that MTV show doesn't happen to them. I hope they don't die. And I say that and I mean it. I hope you don't die. Because that is on the table of things that can happen to you. It's on the fucking table. And not just that. It's on the table that it all goes wrong. It's on the table that you end up like me. Uh, it's on the table for you to lose all sensitivity in your nipples. It's on the table for your fucking implant to leak in your body and you not know. It's on the table for your implants to get fucking mold and shit on them. Jessica Simpson almost died from her tummy tuck. Don't tell me that fucking rich bitch didn't have the best surgeons. Imagine if she had. 
Those children, was that really worth it? Before you get pregnant, if you want to have children, start working out. Because you can consider, you can continue working out through your pregnancy. Treat your body like a temple. Do so, dude. Have your kids before 27 the way we're designed to, so your body heals from this. But making this fucking normalized to take knives and chop ourselves up for vanity is disgusting, it's dangerous, and it is not advocating for or elevating women in any way. I don't know who Loretta is. Come up first. She was due have her baby legit trying to get it to convince her to pull the incision tight. Yes, that the normalization of plastic surgery for vanity purposes, for body dysmorphic purposes is disgusting. It's disgusting and people need to start shaming these doctors that do it. They are barbaric. Barbaric. Cleft palate, that's one thing. Third degree burns all over your body, that's another. But I just want to look sexy? Are you fucking kidding me? You're willing to risk your life. Risk permanent mutilation to your body, permanent pain, permanent shit going wrong for I want to be sexy. Your Our priorities are fucked. Fucked. That's insane. It's insane, you guys. It really is. All right, locals, what's going on here? Oh, I know that cleft palate isn't just cosmetic. Guys, there's some surgeries people need. I'm aware of that. It helps your quality of life. How does fake tits help your quality of life? Well, mentally, go to the shrink, bitch. Go to the shrink. I'm rocking one titty over here. One. And it ain't that good because she had to cut most of it out. I got franken titties. Like, your fucking thought process is so shallow, and I'm sorry that you're in it. <laughs> you need to get out of that shit. That's right. A doctor shouldn't put an ear in someone's forehead because they can. They shouldn't put a uterus in someone's body because they can. They shouldn't put implants in someone's butt or boobs because they can. They shouldn't suck our fat out just because they can. Now, if you've had like 200 pound weight loss and you've got all that flabby skin, I've read that it's a health hazard, totally different, but you're still taking the same risks, but that's totally different. That's not for vanity. That's not for vanity. You don't know what's been going on with Dolly Parton's tits. She's not going to be real with you. It's called loss aversion. She might be in horrible pain. She probably hasn't felt her tits in 60 years. No feeling whatsoever. And for what? Desensitizing ourselves for what? For someone to get a boner? To look good in a dress? Stuff your bra, bitches. I got a padded bra on right now. All right. I'm going to let this mess seep in. So it's the, well, it didn't happen to me. And your story is, you know, more rare. No, it's not, man. There's thousands of women that just upon revising their their boob job, meaning every seven years you're supposed to get a new one. And if you have boobs older than seven years, I'm sorry, ticking time bomb, you're an idiot. Why did you do this to yourself if you don't have the money to revise them? You're supposed to. You have a ticking time bomb that's degrading in your body. It does. Over time, wear and tear. The shit. You gotta replace it. I have seen photos of mold. Black mold all over the implant. Just for a revision. Which means they put new ones in. And God knows what's gonna fucking happen with that. This isn't normal. It's not okay. It's not fucking okay, man. boob lift. I will say this. If you're like, I, I don't care. I'm willing to risk my life for vanity. And I've told women, 
But you don't understand my pancake boobs. I'm like, bitch, you think I don't understand having D cups and then not? What do you think happened? What do you think fucking happened to me? You don't think I get it just because I didn't have a baby and didn't get milk titties doesn't mean my titties didn't get all stretched out and then go to nothing. So have a fucking seat on that one. <laughs> if you have to do anything, if you're like, my vanity has won, I just have to, just lift them. Please don't put anything in there. Oh my God. Please don't do it. So that's where I'm at with all of this. That's where I'm at. And that's all I can do. I'm going to start off with the Power Serum today. This is our lowest price of the year. It's not going to be lower ever again. It's 19 bucks. Uh, firms, lifts, tackles, fine lines and wrinkles. So go get it. 19 bucks in my store. Doesn't get fucking better than that. Yes, mental health. Dude, these doctors, this is a racket anymore. This is a fucking dangerous situation we have going on where hospitals just want money and funding for what they do to us. They're not there to help. They're not there to help. They're not there to help. A plastic surgeon giving people nose jobs and facelifts. I've said it before. If you get the saggy eyes where you can't see, you can't drive anymore, completely different it is ruining when people say quality of life. Well, I'm not sexy and I want boners like that's fuck off. This bitch can't see. Don't you see the difference there? You have a cleft palate. Your mouth's all open. You can't chew. It fucking ruins your quality of life. You don't see the difference between that and tits. Like, dude, get out of your own narcissistic head. That's what it is. It's narcissism. I know this because I did it. Narcissism, body dysmorphia, and you don't fix it with a knife. <laughs> Seriously. The knife ain't doing it, guys. Something's fucked up in there. All right. Eye serum. This is my Isinox eye serum. I love this shit because it comes in this massive bottle. Firming, lifting, of course. And it's a serum instead of a cream. In the Western world, it's happening because women aren't standing up. We're blaming men. First off, we're like, it's straight white men and it's all their fault for everything. Fucking man up, ladies. It's your fault. It's my fault. All we do is judge each other. When someone posts a picture of Angelina Jolie online, it's every guy like, she's not good at God. Oh my God, plastic surgery. She's not sexy anymore. It's us. It's women. Stop blaming men for your horse shit. It's you. It's you, ladies. Do you see a bunch of straight guys? Oh my God, I totally would like 20 years ago, but not now. They're like, still would. Like they're simple, simple tits. You could just be like, here's a vagina. And they'd be like, I don't even care what that's attached to. Congratulations. I love it. Like, you're so full of shit. <laughs> when you say it's men who are fucking putting this shit together. It's you. It's me. It's you. It's me. It is not dudes. It is not dudes. There's like five pieces of shit, like fist pumping Jersey Guido dudes that might like some fake tits. Avoid them. What are you doing with this guy? Nobody likes that guy. <laughs> As I'm getting older, it feels awful when you feel your skin is falling. And when you feel your eyelids hanging down, your eyelids feel heavy. Of course. Look, no one likes getting old. The Rolling Stones. What a drag it is getting old, right? A new clinical advanced wrinkle corrector with AHA, PHA. We are going to plump. And tackle wrinkles. That's what I'm doing. Pump and tackle. No one likes getting old. We're all going to get old. Not all of us. Some of us might die. But why don't we start celebrating it? Why don't we start saying it's beautiful? Why are we shaming aging? Dude, yes, it sucks. Why don't we just aspire to be the healthiest and the best we can be? And not just on the surface. Eat well, you know. Yeah, the alternative to being old is not being alive. Dude, I don't like getting old. I come from an industry where you have to be tip-top all the time. 
don't think it doesn't hurt me when people come on my page and they're like, wow, man, what happened to you? You're fucking old now. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's been 20 years since you watched that fucking show. Excuse me that in two decades I aged and I'm going to keep aging because I'm not going to use Botox and I'm not going to do fillers. That's toxins, botulism. What the fuck, dudes? We're all going to get old. Like I said, if your eyes are sagging like an English Mastiff to the point where you, you only got those corners, you're like, I can't even drive my car anymore. That's completely different from I just don't feel sexy anymore and I don't like my aging skin. No one likes their aging skin. <laughs> There's nobody that likes it. Like, what the fuck? Ugh. <laughs> nobody. Okay, so today, I would like to go really light with my makeup. Really light. I just want to have a light, natural, pretty day. I think this is perfect. My darling palette. I think that is a perfect palette. Live and let live. I think allowing people to mutilate themselves. Imagine if I was standing on the street and I had a knife and you're watching me. I cut my th cut. I'm going to cut my wrist off and then I'm going to put it on my forehead. You'd be like, what the fuck? Stop her. But if it's to titillate dicks and make someone look sexy, oh, it's fine. Live and let live. What the fuck is wrong with us? Do you not see the brainwashing by the powers that be that stand to make a killing off us normalizing this bullshit? <laughs> Have brainwashed you into thinking that's normal but the other isn't? What the fuck? <laughs> no. Like Fresh and Fit say about 10% of men are having 90% of sex. That's why there's so many depressed men. That's because y'all sit at home on your fucking computers and you don't go meet people. True. Doesn't always happen. See, for me, it was the reverse. I was going to uh, charity events, like stair runs and stuff. This is the BDL eye primer. And I was like, I'm going to meet a nice guy that like cares about people and does stuff to like raise money for cancer. And I met this guy. <laughs> he was a rocket scientist, like for real. And his job was to fuck with mice, like experiment on mice, like what it'd be like in space on a mouse to see how far we can push humans. And when he talked about that, he was very interesting. This was the most boring man on planet Earth. I mean, like that guy, Stein, Ben Stein, Bueller. Bueller, <laughs> I was like... I'm trying so hard. I love nerds, but you, you've left planet Earth with your nerddom to the point where you're, you're a robot. I can't even identify with you. You're, but I tried. I tried. I tried. Because I'm like, oh, he cares. But he really didn't care. He was just saying why he, he was physically pushing his human body to see what it would do on the stairs. I'm like, oh, okay. So he's not a giver. But then I met my husband playing video games, which, you know, is not the norm, but it has happened mostly in world of Warcraft. You want a nice dating site? Join a guild. <laughs> Seriously. You have a lot in common. <laughs> um, polar seltzers. I, I'm sure there's something terrible in them. There's something terrible everywhere. You know what? There's something terrible in my farts that are, it's going to give you cancer guys. Live and let live mantra doesn't always help. Well, right now, like states are saying, if your kid says that they're insert thing here, we're going to kidnap them from you and give them whatever drugs and surgeries they want. Dude, anyone that was a kid knows that no kid, not a single kid knows who the fuck they are. None of them. Tina, I'm so glad you're embracing your wrinkles. 59 years young and I promise I shall keep Speaking the truth. Thank you for the 310 stars, Tina. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, 12K and a boob job, rents an apartment. Dude, that's not priorities. 
insane. And I'm sure her tits were fine before. It's disgusting what we have allowed to happen to society. And we have allowed this. No kid knows who they are. When I was a kid, I thought I was a fucking lesbian. I shaved my head from my eyebrows back, had my hair pulled back, and shaved it with a Bic razor. Bic. I dated a girl. Her name was Sarah. Yeah, dude. Thought I was a butch lesbian, 100%. I wasn't. I was just a tomboy. But everyone kept going, you're gay, you're gay. No one knows what the fuck they are when they're kids. You grow out of 99.9% .9 of the things that you're so certain you are by the time you're 25. It's all gone. And we all know it. But this is mythical and magical. And even if you're six years old, the magic Harry Potter spells come down and then this one thing can't be questioned. That's insane. It's insane. It's insane. As insane as normalizing chopping up your tits to look good. Lisa, thank you for the 1776. And I, I am more than happy to tackle this. And I want to share what's happened to me with people because, man, if I can save women from what I did to myself, one, you'll have tons of money. Just be real. Tons of money. That you can spend on way cooler shit. Two, you can learn to love yourself. My tits were perfect before I butchered them. Perfect, glorious, gorgeous. Everyone on Top Model talked about it. Even the gay dudes in the fashion industry were like, holy shit, Tits McGee. I had great tits. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I don't know why I didn't see what everybody else was seeing. What I needed was mental health. That's what I needed. And instead I, I butchered my body. So, there's that. Instead, I hurt myself, and I shouldn't have, and I did. So, this is the Darling palette. Darling. And uh, I just want to do something light and airy today. And if I can learn to love my body like this, one, I know I have body dysmorphia. Two, it looks bad. I'm sorry. It does. It is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. I have scars around my nipples with big scars that go down like this. This one went keloidal, which means it raised and turned purple and was incredibly painful. And I had to get fucking steroid injections and shit because I couldn't even wear a bra because it hurt so bad. My nerves are all damaged. It, it ain't cute. What is this, Tina? Felt the need to give you a little bit more today, especially after you shared how your husband quit Hollywood. Thank you, Tina. We are reevaluating our lives. The things that we used to think that were important. We just, they're just not, you guys. You want a big fancy house? Are you going to take it with you when you die? Anyone? Show of hands, locals. You guys going to take your big fancy house away when you die? All your stuff, all your collectibles. I used to collect so much nerd shit. I mean, I still have a pretty decent amount of nerd shit over here, but I mean, 10% of what my house used to have, um, caregiving for my mom. Yeah. Creative juice takes care of his fucking elderly mom. That dude's a boss and she's so cute and she buys Avon and she's so fucking precious. His mother is so fucking precious. If you saw his mom, you'd be just like, oh my God. And he takes care of her and it's like, no, very precious, very sweet. You will never see a U-Haul at a funeral. That's right. So we're looking at this house and I'm like, dude, this view is to die for. This house is three stories tall. We're going to get older. Do we really need all of this? Do we need it? Do we need that view? Do we need that? I don't know, man. Like, I'm very proud of my husband for walking away from Hollywood because it's hard to do. That money, that's hard. Glenda, thank you for the 500 stars. It's hard because there's so much potential to earn. So, you know, it's scary when you change things around. It's, it's frightening. When you uproot your life and you're like, 
I need a life with more meaning than this, you know? But sometimes you just have to take the chance because what, do you, what are we going to wait until we're on our deathbed? And he, Honey, I'm glad you kept that job with all those terrible um, movie houses and stuff that, I mean, you guys see how bad Hollywood is. He was still in it. Agents and managers and a bunch of fake people that didn't care if he died. They didn't care if he died. Let's just be real. Don't care if he died. Um, my mom is raising my sister's four kids and blessed to have a job I can afford to help her. That's fucking awesome. That's amazing. And we're not promised tomorrow. Judy, thank you for the 310 stars. We're not. And so, again, I'm always so grateful that you guys shop with me. Deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate it. Um... But I couldn't stop my husband from taking that chance. My only fear is like when our health insurance is going to run out. <laughs> That's a little scary because I'm like, we ain't getting younger, Judy. Seriously, thank you. We ain't getting younger. But how much is my husband's soul worth, you know? How much is that worth? How much is that worth? So I'm like, maybe... Smaller house off in the woods somewhere. Sell this to some rich Californians that want some vacation house. Certainly not a house for kids. This is not child friendly. Nope. I would not bring my children here. Well, I'm, uh, I'm not mad at what we're doing with my eyes today. We need all this stuff. Do we need all this stuff? Exchange rate for a soul is not good in South California, right? Pretty, pretty unbelievable. So I support him in what he's doing because I did it. And he supported me, and sometimes you have to take that leap, you know. Why would you stay in a job where you're surrounded by people who make you miserable? People who, I mean, it's an industry of virtue signaling, and none of, none of them mean what they say. None of them. They say Black Lives Matter, they don't mean that. They just say it. Inclusion, they don't mean that. Their overlords just told them they had a quota, so they're going to pretend that they've cared. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they don't fucking care. The tide is turning. Hollywood business, state media, government, and agendas, they're losing now. Yeah, well, they can lose on their own. I think they really lost out on an amazing voice, but if it's not making my husband happy, if he feels like it's draining his actual soul, like, what are you going to tell someone you love? Honey, this job that we have that gives us security and knowing where we're going is actually destroying who I am as a human being. <laughs> now I think you should stay there. <laughs> like, no. No. I know qu uh, quite a few really wealthy people that you would not know. And they're wealthy people I've always respect respected like this one dude has like multiple homes you would have no idea none i've always really liked that about him multiple homes but they're like modest little places if you saw his car he'd be like really this guy's a billionaire and that's his car now granted hidden away where no one sees, he might have a couple of jet hangers with multiple planes because he's a pilot. But you wouldn't know that either. He doesn't tell anyone. He's, I, I respect this dude. It's pretty badass, like what he does. Let's see what's going on at locals. 
there's a fear in the unknown, but you don't know if you don't take the first step. Dude, that's what I did when I left Hollywood. And everyone thought I was fucking nuts. Agents, managers, people in the business, and they all wanted to blame my husband. And I'm like, dude, the writing's been on the wall my entire career. I've been miserable. My entire career, I've told everyone how awful and blood-sucking this industry is and how unhappy I am in this city. Like, I have Facebook memories popping up from 10, 12 years ago where I'm like, every moment spent in L.A. is an agony on my soul. I am dying inside, you know? It's just when I met my husband, it was the catalyst for me to take that leap. And I'm glad I took it, man. I truly, truly am so glad that I took it. I mean, it really panned out. I love selling Avon. And my sales fluctuate, right? Right now I'm in a slump. I'm so grateful. There's still people who shop with me. And I thank you, man. But, yeah, it's like vanity. Dude, I'm starting to see it here. Okay, I'm losing volume in my face. I'm starting to see my dad's jaw, which I never saw because I used to have the baby fat here. But now I'm getting the male Maleficent um, cheekbones, which those are okay. I'm actually cool with that. But then the volume has left right here. And there's like a jowl thing going on. <laughs> And now this jawline is jutting out more than it ever did before because I'm losing that volume and elasticity in my face. But guess what? I'm still fine the way I am. Like, how am I going to argue that with God? God, you fucked up so bad I had to just, you know, keep trying to improve on what you did. My bad. So sad. Sorry, bro. Very light eyeliner. I think I might just do... I mean, there we go. We're talking. You know where you just barely line your lash line? Like so. See? Barely line it. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm going for. So who knows? Maybe we might live in a yurt in the middle of the woods somewhere. Can't tell ya. I said, as long as there's a kitchen. <laughs> I spent two days in my kitchen the last two days just throwing down. But now it's time to eat health food. Now it is the time, guys, because we can't keep that up. All right, I'm just going to line the inner part of my waterline and right at the tips here. See? Just very light. I like that. I can't live in a yurt because I don't like the name yurt. Well, you know, and we looked at these little tiny cabins that you can just dump anywhere. And I'm like, I didn't get the new stove. I messed up. My calendar was messed up. It comes this Friday. <laughs> so, so devastated. I, I almost don't even want to talk about what I did to myself with that one. I was devastated, but. We'll see. We have no hard plans for anything. We're just kicking around ideas. And he loves outdoors. And he, he's almost certi certified to be a full on guidesman, which means, like, if you're a city boy that's like, I want to go hunting and check out the woods, you'd be like, Come with me. Let's go. And I'm like, Maybe you could do a one on one business where people who want to learn survival skills and learn how to track animals and stuff they can you know get a hold of you i think we get so tied up in materialistic things and we're really on the same page right now it's like do 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 we need this you have a great place now 
We do. And we can turn it over, make some money on this a sale, and downgrade. Because we don't need this place. You know what I mean? We could stay here and have payments on our house for 25 years. 25 now? No. 26 years. Or we'd sell it and own something completely, completely, with no payments, no stress, no wondering. You never know. Life is full of options. All I know is I downgraded my nerd stuff, and now I'm like, you know, we'll see. <laughs> you just need a kitchen and a toilet. You know, my husband, when he left for 70-something days in Maine uh, a few years ago now to do his certification, he pooped in buckets. It's why we have a compost pile outside right now. <laughs> Bro pooped in buckets. And you can use it for a garden. Isn't that wild? You poop in buckets and use it as a garden. I don't know if I could do a steel container house. Those are... We're very big. Yeah. You go sit outside with your old man and you contemplate life and... Hey, what are we going to do? I don't know. Let's see. Your Christmas decorations. I just talked to my sister-in-law about that last night. I'm like, I pulled the trigger after two decades, 20 years, on a balsam hill tree that's nine foot tall and it is really nice <laughs> we have removed with a small ceiling and wouldn't have it steel container houses Australia, Australia you guys are so beholden to China with everything that would really bother me not saying that everybody isn't but that would bother me. Let's put a little mascara on. Just a little. Very light, very pretty today. I think we're doing the thing. Credit unions pull our money together to create an alternative to banks. Huh. Living out of hotels, that seems new and fun. New and fun. Spent the weekend building some raised planting beds in my backyard. Yay! That makes me... I would never move to Colorado. They have terrible policies. Terrible. Terrible. It's so sad what they did to that poor state. The former Wild West. Minutered. Colorado Springs has so many meth heads just like zombieing around. So sad what they've allowed to happen there. Anywhere you see a bunch of crime and all that stuff, it's your government's fault. You pay them money and they repay you by doing absolutely nothing with it except for money laundering it and keeping it for themselves because they are not putting it back into your community and the proof is in the pudding. You live in Illinois, all they do is take your money. Look at Chi-Town. If there was an honest politician in Chi-Town, you know what they'd say? Guys, we have a serious gang problem. They refuse to say it. It's not guns. It's the fault of guns. It's the white supremacy. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's gangs. The end. 
the fucking end. Gangs, period. Gangs. Gangs. <laughs> like, that's like going to Mexico. Oh, there's some real serious crime here. You mean the cartel? No, it's the white supremacy. You mean the cartel? No, it's the... The, the systematic this? No, it's the fucking cartel. <laughs> Why does Chi-Town keep ignoring that, you know, they have a gang infestation? Like cockroaches. No shot. You are out of your fucking mind. I couldn't even go to school wearing black or blue or red and black. Like, you're out of your fucking mind out of your fucking mind delusional if you don't think shy town has a gang problem utterly delusional take back your cities and communities hold your representatives responsible for stealing your money and doing nothing with it. If you have crime, then you need to crack down on it. There needs to be huge consequences. Not everyone just walks free. Like, I'm sorry, dude. In a democracy, we all voted for your shit to be illegal. And not for you. Oh, oh, no, no. no. Fuck off. Get out of here. Oh, the government's totally in on it with the gangs. That's why they don't mention it. Just like the cartel, who's also their partners. <laughs> They're like, but the cartel brings all the drugs over the border we leave open to fund all the gangs, to sell all the drugs, to create all the homeless so we can keep taking your money and pretending we're going to deal with the problems we never do to keep funding the cartel. <laughs> they settle their drugs to the gangs. It's just, you know. Pray the hurricanes don't wipe, out, wipe you out. I've never liked Florida. I don't, I don't like that kind of weather. It's nice for a second to go swimming in on a vacation, but I would never want to live in that kind of weather. It's just not for me. I like snow and cold and that's my jam. Snow and cold. Two-tone hair at Gompers Junior High. Gompers! They're bringing it back. Fucking gompers. They used to have to bust the kids from the hill to west because they couldn't send them to central, which they were closer to because of the gang wars. What happened? There you go. Okay. Yes, humidity does keep you from wrinkling, but if you can't breathe and you're generally like miserable in it, like, I just can't breathe in it. My body doesn't like it. My body likes Arctic conditions. <laughs> I like it cold. Menopausal women in that swamp heat? That would be terrible. Terrible. Let's see my little locals chat. <sighs> You're just chilling. You guys are just chilling. Nothing else for me to read there. Uh, today, because I want to let my little face breathe, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put Match Prime Face Perfector with SPF 20. Um, it is a cream gel to powder finish. So it soaks up oil and stuff for all you ladies that are like, I don't wear makeup. One, this has SPF 20 in it. Two, it blurs fine lines and imperfections, right? And three, it soaks up oil. So your bare face look will be even better. I always tell people, I don't wear makeup. I'm like, that's cool. You should at least wear this just to protect your skin from the environment and make your skin look the best it can look, see? 
Very pretty. I like it. I like it. And just like that, she's done. I'm done. Today, I used the Darling palette on my eyes. Boop, 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 boop. Darling. And, uh, just the match prime all over my face. Let's see. Let's do my watermelon cream shop. Lip oil, crumb chop. I don't know how to fucking say it. All I know is it's good on my lips. There we go. Put that on. And spilt water all over my desk. Told y'all how ugly my boobies are. Who could ask for more? Who could ask for more? Um, Started off with the Physio Gel Hypoallergenic Daily Moisture Therapy Mask. Really, really helped my skin. Followed that up with our a new power system, system serum. This is on sale for $19.99. It's the lowest price of the year. I would get it now. This is great at firming, lifting, tackling wrinkles. I use the Isinox Eye Serum. Um, and I use our... A new clinical AHA alpha hydroxy wrinkle corrector. That's my lotion. Put that all the way. I would like to stop and thank you, Amanda Davidson Gifford. Thank you for all the skincare tips and for being the best Avon lady out there. Well, thank you for the stars, my friend. Tom Gully, Judy McGrath, Glenda Liz. Tina Stamper, Lisa Shin Jones, you guys, I appreciate it. Life is a beautiful thing, man. Figuring out life is a beautiful thing. And it's been fun just sitting here with you guys while I figure out my motherfucking life. You know what I mean? We're like, figure out your life. I'm like, I am really trying to here. I look amazing. Thanks, dude. I'm telling you. There's nothing on my skin but that stuff. Soaks the oil up. It's great as a primer, but I love it for bare. So if you don't want your ooey dewy and you want your matte finish, this is this is the way to go. Life is beautiful and the system is ugly. But let, the, let us rage against the machine, shall we? Not that that band does that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we, we... We will do it. And uh, on that note, my link to shop has been posted many times below. I will post this for you right quick. This is the mask that I used. It's not letting me do this. Why? What is going on? Hello? How weird. It is not letting me copy and paste. Something's going on with my computer. I have no idea what. That is odd. I think it's because my stream is on local, so it's not letting me copy-paste anything, but I will go into my Facebook and my locals chat, and I will post links for the crap I used on my face today. It'll be great. Guys, I hope you have a great day. I'm going to go hang out with my, uh, it looks darling on. Thank you. My locals people for just a few minutes before I go. But, uh, my husband will be streaming soon on twitch.tv slash duck sauce. And, uh, love you guys. Leave your body alone. You're beautiful just the way you are. You know why? You're alive. How's that? <laughs>